We're going to do a little bit more work on addition, subtraction, and multiplication of fractions. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to see that the kind of work we have done previously with negative numbers or with taking square roots or uh, working with exponents, all of that can apply just as well to fractions. So let's start with an example. Say I want to calculate negative one and a half as uh, subtract two and three quarters. Okay, when I work with um, this, I'm going to do it in the same, same sort of thing I've done always with fractions. When I've got mixed numbers, my easiest thing is to um, turn them into improper fractions. So I'm going to turn this one and a half into an improper fraction, and I do this by saying one times two is two, plus one I get three over two. And then I'm also going to turn this thing into an improper fraction, so I say 2 times 4 is 8, plus 3 gives me 11, like that. Okay, now my next step is I have got two fractions and I am subtracting and they've got different denominators. I know with addition and subtraction I have to have same denominator before I can do anything. So I need to find the common denominator of 2 and 4. Well hopefully immediately you can see that the common denominator will be 4. So what I need to do is write each of those fractions as a fraction with the denominator of 4. So 3 over 2, what will that be over 4? Well, I multiplied the denominator by 2, so I must multiply the numerator by 2, and I will get 6. And of course, 11 over 4, I don't need to do anything to it because it's already got a denominator of 4. So what I'll get here then is I've got negative 6 over 4, and I subtract off 11 over 4. All right, so what will my final answer be? Well, it's the same thing that we have always done with negative answers, if you, negative numbers, right? If you think about where you're sitting on the number line, right? We start off somewhere in the negatives, which is 6 over 4. And we are going to, from there, we're going to subtract off. So we're going this way. And we're going to subtract off a further 11 over 4. So we're going to jump another 11 quarters further down. And where are we then going to end up? Well, you were 6 quarters down. You go 11 further down. You're going to end up at negative 17 quarters, negative 17 over 4. Okay, I want you to try one quickly now. What will 1 6 minus 7 eighths be equal to? Pause the video and do this in your homework books now. Okay, let's check that we got this. We're talking about fractions and we're doing subtraction, so our first step is always to find our common denominator. The multiples of 6 are 6, 12, 18, 24, etc. And of 8, we got 8, then 16, and then 24, so we can see our common denominator has to be 24. We're going to take 1 6 and we're going to take 7 8 and we're going to write them now both with that denominator of 24. We've multiplied 6 by 4 to get 24, so we must multiply the 1 by 4 and we will get 4. We've multiplied 8 by 3 to get 24, so we must multiply the 7 by 3 and we'll get 21. So we've got 4 over 24 and we're going to take away 21 over 24. So we're going to then say, okay, we've got 4 of those 24ths and we're going to take away 21 of those 24ths. And so we're going to end up, we take 4 and subtract 21, we get 17 and we're going to get 4, subtract 21, we get negative 17 over 24. Okay, let's just do a little reminder of what it means when we talk about something squared. What that means is if we square something, it means we take it and we multiply it by itself. And our rules of negatives, um, how we multiply negatives, stay exactly the same. What we've got is a negative times a negative. That's a 
positive, and then one third times one third. Well, how do we multiply fractions? We multiply the top, we multiply the bottom. So one times one is one, three times three is nine. Just a quick point to note that this, it'll actually be different if we wrote it this way. Can you see the difference? In this one, the negative is included in what is squared. So you say negative a third times negative a third, right? Whereas in this one, the negative stands outside and it's just the third that is squared. So this one will be the negative stands outside and it is the third that is squared. In other words, we say one third times one third. And so our answer here will be negative one ninth. Okay, let's give you one to try quickly. One and a sixth times negative two and a seventh. Pause the video and try this quickly in your homework books. All right, let's go through it. First thing we deal with is we've got a positive multiplied by a negative, so we know that that's going to give us a negative. Then we deal with the um, mixed numbers, turn them into improper fractions. So this becomes 1 times 6 plus 1. It is 7 over 6. And then this one becomes 2 times 7 is 14 plus 1 is 15 over 7. Okay, then I've got 7 times 15 over 6 times 7. And I don't want to do big multiplications, so I'm going to try and see when I can cancel. Whatever I divide into the top, I divide into the bottom. Well, I can see, obviously, I can divide top and bottom by 7. And then I've got a 15 and a 6. Both of those can be divided by 3. And so I will get my answer of... 5 over 2. So hopefully you noted here, it's very simple to do this. As long as you first take care of the sign, you say positive times negative is negative. Then you've got nothing more to worry about with your positives and negatives and all that sort of thing. You're just doing a very simple 1 and 1 sixth multiplied by 2 and 1 seventh that you know how to do very easily. The very last thing I want us to look at is how, for example, would we work out what the square root of 25 over 9 is? Well, what does square root mean? You're trying to find out the number which, when multiplied by itself, will give you 25 over 9. Well, let's think about what would need to be in the numerator so that when you multiplied it by itself, you'll get 25. Hopefully, you can immediately see that answer is 5. And similarly with the denominator, what would you have to have here so that when you multiply it by itself, you'll get 9? Well, the answer there is 3. So the square root of 25 over 9 is 5 over 3. And why is that so? Because if you take 5 over 3 and you multiply it by 5 over 3, you get 25 over 9.